What's up everyone, this is Justin from Make Supply and in this video tutorial we're making a three pocket card holder. If you'd like to purchase this template, it is available for instant digital download at the Make Supply shop or the Make Supply Etsy store. If you do not wish to purchase the template at this time, I uh, invite you to just follow along the build process. Thanks for watching. Alright, let's take inventory. So, the template. Uh, printed out on 110 pound cardstock from Staples. It's a pretty simple template, just two pieces. However, when we trace these, this, we'll be cutting out um, two pieces each of these. So you'll also notice there's a little notch up in the corner there. We'll use that to mark our leather for where this card slot aligns. The leather we'll be using is three to four ounce cute tan light bridle from Thoroughbred Leather. Number two X-Acto knife for cutting, C.S. Osborne scratch all, wing divider for making our stitching groove, Good Japan edge beveler, craft tool three millimeter diamond stitching chisels, four prong and two prong, various grit sandpapers for doing edges, um, Good Japan uh, skybang knife. This part's optional, but I'm going to use it to reduce the bulk in the edges when we put this together, and we'll talk about that more when we get to that step, but you don't have to use this. Uh, metal cork back ruler, uh, main thread 0 .035 natural uh, polycord, uh, block of leather craft wax with two tandy stitching needles, some binder clips for holding it together while it's glued, the wood slicker for burnishing, saddle soap for burnishing, a little cup of water for burnishing. I'm also going to use this Dremel with the Coco Bolo bit uh, attachment for burnishing because I'm lazy this morning, and some rubber cement. Um, so in our next step, you're going to want to go ahead and cut out these two pieces for the template and then we will get to tracing it onto the leather. Alright, so I cut out my two pieces. So now we're going to trace them on here. So you want to cut out two of each of these. I'll trace two of each of these and then we will cut out two of each. So make sure to, if you want, to mark any somewhere on that little line that's on the template so you can know where to where your top edge of the card slot should match up. Second one.
and one more. So I went ahead and traced out the four pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and the next step will be to just cut these out and then we'll come back and continue on. Okay, so I went ahead and cut out those four pieces, as you can see, two card slots, two body panels. So now we have to finish the inside edges of all four the four pieces that won't be accessible when we put it together. So the inside edge of this card slot, the inside edge of this card slot, the top, and a little bit more around the corner of both body panels. And you, if you made a little mark when you were tracing, you will see the, um, you'll know which side is the top. Otherwise, you can make it whatever you want. So first, I'm just going to take some sandpaper just lightly, very lightly, go over, just go around the pieces. This helps if you, you know, when you're cutting, maybe it's a little jagged or something. I find this the sanding step really helps with curves, especially long curves, because it just helps. You know, you're doing a little sanding here, but smooths it out. Then when you're burnishing, it smooths it out. You know, it just helps refine that edge a little bit more. Now, we will burnish these edges. Um, you can use the wood slicker or a piece of canvas for this, um, just for these this part here. Uh, these single layer pieces, I'm gonna use the Dremel burnisher just because it's quicker. It's a good investment if you're uh, looking for a new tool. A little bit of water, a little bit of saddle soap.
as you can see, there's a lot less labor involved. And when you're using this, you know, it's very light pressure. Just let the, let the dremel do all the work. Awesome. So now that the top parts of all of the pieces are burnished, we will now, in the next step, I'm going to clean this up and then we will glue our pieces down. Okay, so I know I said the next step was gluing, but I forgot that I wanted to do some edge skiving. So for anyone not familiar with the process, Skiving edges is the process of taking off the, the bulk around some of the edges of the pieces that you're putting together. Um, so it, like with this leather, we're using a three to four ounce leather. You know, one to two to three layers isn't so bad, but when you get up to four or maybe more layers, so I'll, I'll stack them together here. So the seam of this, this card wall, it's going to have at certain places is going to have four layers thick, as you can see. This is a terrible example. Let me switch this around. Oh. Slippery. Right, like so around the bottom, it's going to be four layers thick, and that that's that's pretty substantial. So, you know, in like commercially made goods, they have machines that do this. You run it under and it cuts off the bulk around all the pieces. Well, obviously we don't have that here. So the other option is to use a skiving knife or there's different versions of these. This is the one from Goods Japan. They have other ones that are kind of like a dread. It works like a rake where it'll just slowly shave off the material. Uh, I'm not going to focus too much on this. I'm going to do it and then I, I'm going to do a little bit here and then I'm going to fast forward the video for the rest of that. I'm only going to do it on the two pockets and then, but if you wanted to go crazy, you could do it on all four pieces and get a real nice edge. Um, it just, you know, reduces the bulk, it gives it a nice professional look. So I'll start on this card slot. You know, it's, it's a skill on its own self, learning how to skive. I don't do a whole lot of it. So, I'm not an expert on it, but there are videos on YouTube on how to do this. So as you can see, I'm just kind of taking a little bit off of the edge, probably about a quarter inch. My 
knife could be a little sharper, but we'll deal with it. Some leathers are easier to do this to than others. Stuff like a uh, Chrome Excel really scives very easily. You can get it right under the lip of the leather and just like pull off a nice even amount all in one shot. You get the idea. So, as you can see, it took off a little bit of the bulk around that card slot. So, I'm gonna do these other ones, do this other one, and just kind of speed it up, and then we'll come back and we'll glue. Okay, so <clears throat> now we're done that section. I did both of them. Um, again, if you don't have this, you don't have to do it. Just put it together as normal. Well. Now we will assemble. Take a little bit of rubber cement. I try to keep this clean. I don't know if you saw my last video. I got rubber cement over everything. the light layer. This one's a little you got to make sure that you don't put glue where the card slot won't be so kind of just measure it up you have the marking on the one side so you know a boundary there but the little one down here the little edge just kind of guesstimate where that edge will sit Line it up with the bottom edge, you know, all around. Same thing with the other side.
Okay. So I'm going to let these dry for a second, and then we'll come back and continue on. So I gave that a couple minutes to dry, and now we will continue. So first I'm going to take a rough grit sandpaper and just straighten these edges up a little bit. same on this So doing that just helps, you know, align your pieces that you glued together in case they are off a little bit. Alright, so now you can kind of see how this is going to go together here. That side will face on there. So there really is no front to this. Um, Okay, so now it is time to mark our stitching marks. So if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that when I do more than two layers, I like to punch an initial round on the first two, and then put it together and punch all the way through. That way it's easier to keep the, the chisel straight. So, you know, going through four layers is a lot harder to keep completely straight as opposed to going through two. So, if you don't want to do it this way, you'll just skip ahead and glue this together and then go ahead and do your holes. Um, but I'm not going to do it that way. You're braver than me. So, let's pick one side to be the front, it doesn't matter, it's the same design on both sides. And then get your uh, groove marker or your wing divider. And then put, so you want to kind of start right around where the curve, the bottom of the curve goes, just to keep it on a nice straight angle. good. And so I'm going to now take my chisel and do hand pressure marks of where these holes are going to go. I always recommend doing hand pressure because it just gives you a better idea of what's going on and if you just start smashing through, what if you get over here and it's not aligned how you want it to be? Um, just one extra step that really helps. So. I'm going to align my 
chisel with the lip of the card slot between the two. So between the middle two, sorry. So let's do that. Okay, you can see that. Let me... And now I will continue going around. So also in my other videos, I would always start up here and then start up here and then meet somewhere. I'm not going to do that this time. I'm just going to go straight around, um, mainly because there's no, it's not a, it's not a um, symmetrical design. So there's no lip part over here that I want to mash up directly under the holes. Like I want them directly in a certain part of the stitching line because it's down here now. So I'm just going to go around, come up here, and then end it as close to that as I can. Let's see where this lines up here. I do one more or two more. Okay, so that didn't line up too bad. So I kind of gambled there. I didn't know how that was going to line up. Gambled on camera, paid off. <laughs> if you want to start somewhere, you know, exact marking here and exact marking here, go down and then meet. That's fine too. Um, I didn't do it that way, and it worked out okay. So. Now I have my marked holes here, and on this side I'm just going to mark a groove. So now I'm going to go ahead off camera and I'm just going to punch straight through these holes that I made. Just on the two layers we haven't glued it together yet. And then we'll come back and put it together and finish it off. So go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I went ahead and punched through all those holes on the initial side. So now we will glue this to the other part. Let's do that. Okay. So now put the front onto the back. And that last step still didn't make sense. I hope it'll make more sense now that once we put this together.
really take the time and make sure that this is straight, especially on the bottom where it's going to be four layers. Okay, that's pretty straight. So now I, okay, so to explain again, if you didn't understand why I punched the holes when I only had half of it put together, because now when we go to punch the rest of the holes, I already have it through straight on two layers. That way I can just put my chisel in here, it'll hit the bottom two layers, and then it's a nice straight shot, as opposed to trying to go through four layers and trying to keep this thing straight. That's super thick, and it's very easy to go off course. It's just another tip to keep your stitching line very straight, or straight, you know, any advantage you can get to keep your stitching straight. So now, like before, I'm just going to sand this. Big boy. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead again and then I'm just going to go into the holes that I already have and punch through one more time to get through the rest of the piece and then I will come back. Okay, so uh, went ahead and punched through the back. Now it is ready to stitch. So like with all the tutorials, um, I'm going to stitch off camera. If you need help saddle stitching, I did a full saddle stitching tutorial on which is linked below this video in the blog post. Or if you're just watching this on YouTube, you can find it in my YouTube channel. This one's literally the same exact way as I did in the tutorial with an open-ended piece. So I'm going to start um, on the, th the third one, the third hole from the top, back stitch twice, stitch, come back, stitch all the way around, back, come up to the end, back stitch twice. This is the front, this is the back. And so I'll do that now. Let me get my thread out. So I always use four times the amount of the distance that you're working with. I don't think I ever explained that on my other tutorials. I should have. So kind of measure roughly that, and then take four times that. I always take a little bit more, just in case. I'd rather waste a little bit of thread as opposed to, you know, running out while I'm stitching. Take my needles, take my thread, and I'm going to stitch this up and then we will come back. Okay, just finished stitching that up. You can see here, let me cut this uh, string off. Let's get a closer look here. Okay, so now we are done stitching. So now it is time to finish our edges. So I will take my rough grit sandpaper. Remember, you already did the top, so don't sand the top. Since there's four, you know, three to four layers here, you can put some muscle in it if you want. You won't bend anything. You know, this helps obviously straighten everything up, straighten up all the layers, but it also removes any excess adhesive that will interfere with burnishing. Cool. So now I will do my damp sand as I normally do. 
All I do is take a little bit of water, very light. Just put a little bit on there. Let it soak for a second. I'll take my sandpaper and then I go all in one direction. So what this will do is push down all those fibers, compact them in one even direction. It'll also push the lip up a little bit, which makes it easy to easier to take off the edge. Cool. So as you can see, this is what we're working with here. All right. Palm stretch. Let's find the edge. So I use a really shallow bevel. I don't really like the super rounded look for some reason, um, but you can obviously use a, a bigger bevel than I'm using to get that effect. side and go to the other side. Ooh, don't do that. I usually just hit it with the higher grit sandpaper. Make sure I get a little bit of the edge that I just beveled in there. Make it nice and pretty. Awesome. Now we are ready to burnish. Get my saddle soap, get my water. This burnishing bit isn't really big enough to, yeah, I can't even get that. They make different sizes. You could actually get a bigger one to take this four layer, but I don't have that bit. So I'm gonna have to use the, what's like? Actually, it would have been probably better for canvas on this one, but I didn't use it in the inventory so I'll use that next time. The canvas is a great great substitute when you're burnishing especially pieces that are thicker or have a lot of variation like it goes from like two layers to three layers to one layer something like that because the canvas doesn't have a set size it just conforms to whatever your hand is holding. wood slicker, just go to town. Again, burnishing is less about pressure and more about speed. And, you know, you don't need to push very hard. You're trying to just work up some, um, some friction. would have been so much easier if I used canvas. Oh, spilling water.
Okay, that's one pass. Shaping up nice. And I'll do another pass. Go, you could go on again if you would like. Get that down as shiny as you want. I'm gonna stop there for that. Take some of my Leathercraft wax. This wax is the wax that um, I make. Um, most people just use standard beeswax. This is a combination of beeswax, candle, I don't know how to say it correctly, candelilla wax, and then some jojoba oil and I found a ratio that I really like and I think it works better than standard beeswax So I'm just finished burnishing. And I'm going to go grab some cards and some cash and we'll test this guy out. Okay, so I picked up a couple cards here. Let's see how these go in. Slide in real nice on the front pocket. The middle pocket is probably better, especially at first this will be a little tight, especially if you're using a veg tan. Um, better for like a longer term storage, you know, a card maybe you don't pull out as much. Put that in the middle there. You have another pocket here. On the back. This is my contribution to showing cash. I have one dollar. This is why I sell templates. Because <laughs> I'm broke. Um, the cash will slide in. Again, it'll be a little hard at first. It won't go down all the way, but that's okay. It usually goes down further than that, but once it breaks in, it'll go down a little bit further. As you can see, this is our finished three pocket card holder. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section of the YouTube video, on the blog post, you can email me directly, you can shoot me a message or leave a post on Facebook. If you guys are on Facebook, look up uh, the Make Supply and if you could like it, that'd be awesome. Um, Otherwise, enjoy your card holder. Thanks for watching.